So hello, uh, I'm Amelie from First to Fourth Yoga. If you have landed here, um, not directly from my classes. And in this video, I want to talk you through some practices and exercises that can help with diastasis recti. Now to keep this video pretty short, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what diastasis recti is, how you can check whether you have it and why it really, really matters that you do know whether or not you have some diastasis recti. But I have a long blog and another video that you can look at. So I'll put that in the comments to look at first uh, before you explore this video. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk you through five practices to help support your body and your core muscles during pregnancy, and then some practices to try to actively repair any stretching and loss of tension that has happened in your midline once you've had your baby. So in all of the exercises, we want to have a really nice long posture. And it means that the rib cage needs to be stacked over the pelvis and that the neck is nice and long. And we're making the nice long line between our pubic bone and our chest bone in all positions. So all these, these two points stacked over each other in all directions. And we try to keep this space as long as possible. And that's one thing that's gonna help us maintain or repair the integrity of the core. And the second guiding principle is that we're gonna really work with the breath. So we're gonna take nice big inhales and then nice slow exhales that are gonna gently engage the deep abdominals and then recruit the rest of the core muscles. So it's really important when you're looking at either repairing uh, diastasis, but in general, looking at core things that we work from the inside out. So sometimes we go at it really forcefully. And what ends up doing is that we, we almost create tightness on the outside and we're not really addressing what's going on underneath. And that might cause you more issues down the line. So we want to think a little bit more long term and really rebuild this core responsiveness from the inside out. It might mean that the practices don't feel very strong to you, but we really need to trust that this is the better process for our body to support the well-being of our body. So let's get going with the first practice. So we're going to start sitting. And so I'm going to sit on the floor and I have a cushion to prop my pelvis. And so you can take cross-legged, you can be kneeling, uh, but if it's not comfortable for you to sit on the floor, you can sit on a chair or you can sit, um, you could sit on the sofa, but making sure it's not too squishy. So what we want to make sure of is that we are nice and long. So pubic bone, chest bone, nicely stacked on top of each other. I'm not squashing my tailbone, my neck is nice and long. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is really explore breathing. And this is gonna be, this way of breathing is gonna be the base of all the exercises that we're going to do and explore. And this is called diaphragmatic breathing. You might also have it called 360 breathing, full yogic breathing. It's all the same thing, okay? So you might have, uh, maybe if you do also different sort of movement classes, maybe Pilates classes, or you've seen a physio, you might have a band like this, a TheraBand. So if you have one of those, you could use this. Otherwise, we're going to use our hands and we're going to place our hands into the lower ribs or across the lower ribs. So that might feel that you're slightly under your bra strap or just over a little bit with your bra strap. If it's comfortable to have your thumbs towards the back, that's great. But if that's not comfortable, you can keep all the fingers pointing forward. Wonderful. And then what we're going to try to find here is that as we inhale, the rib cage inflates sideways into our hands. And if your thumbs are at the back, you feel also that the rib cage expands to the back. So it's like a jellyfish expanding as we inhale. And we really want to find this expansion. 
and then the belly is going to inflate as well. And then we're going to take a soft exhale through the mouth, letting the exhale escape nice and softly without any tension. And you're going to feel your ribcage float down. And as you continue exhaling, can you feel as if your lower belly was hugging in towards the spine? Now, if you have a baby on board at this stage, you might feel that it's like giving your baby a little hug. So as if your baby was in a kangaroo pouch and you're gently tightening the pouch to get the baby closer to you. If you are now postnatal, you might feel that it feels more like trying to bring your hip bones together. Or you can do this exercise lying down on the floor with bent knees. I'll show you that a little bit later on, where you might feel a little bit easier to feel this gentle engagement of the abdominals because you don't have to uh, carry the weight of the abdominals in this more upright position. So let's do it again. We're going to take an inhale into the ribs. So breathing nice and wide really feeling the movement of your brick cage. Don't worry if you can't feel too much because if you haven't been breathing this way, so take your exhale through the mouth, feel the rib cage deflate. So if this is the first time you do these sort of exercises, you might not feel much motion and that's all right. We're going really gently. So again, inhaling into your hands. So really feel the expansion of the rib cage, keeping the length of your pubic bone to your chest bone. And then a soft exhale through the mouth. And then as you continue exhaling, feel the hug of the lower belly in. Now you might have heard this cue, this teaching instruction to bring your belly button to the spine. I don't really like it because we might end up crunching in. So think rather that you hug the whole belly just a little closer to you. So let me show you, if you have this TheraBand, what you would do is wrapping around the rib cage, just take a cross, and here I'm not pulling, I'm not pulling tight, I'm just wrapping it around, so that when I inhale, I can have a little feedback to feel that my rib cage are pressing against the band. And then as I exhale, I just let the band go back to normal. Maybe I gently pull on the band, tiny bit to feel the rib cage really lowering down and then I continue exhaling until I feel that I can hug my baby and so that's the base breathing of all of our exercises now during pregnancy we cannot really try to repair diastasis because we would be fighting against the pressure that our baby is putting against the tissues uh, until we give birth. So what we're trying to think about, rather than trying to close the gap or repair, 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 what we're trying to find is a sense that we are really supporting core integrity with our breathing, with our pelvic floor, with um, using our back muscles and all of our abdominal muscles, right? So second exercise, we're gonna look at so I'm going to change my position, but you can stay where you are. We're going to extend our legs in front of us. So still sitting onto something so that you are not sitting on your tailbone. And again, the back is nice and long and I can really lengthen the crown of my head up. So the whole of my torso is nice and long. If you are pregnant, you can take the feet slightly apart to make sure there's no compression of your belly into the groin area. If you are postnatal and you don't have your baby on board, then you can bring the legs either completely together or parallel. You could also bring a block or a book or a thick cushion and hug it between your legs for additional engagement of the legs. But if you're pregnant, no need to hug anything. Keep your legs a little bit wide. But what we're going to do is press through the heel. So you should feel an engagement of the inner legs. 
and this is going to then support our pelvis into this position and all of that is going to feed into the responsiveness of our core muscles so what we're going to do here take our hands and then we're going to wave the hands as if we were pushing something away so not something too heavy but really it's not just that we are waving our hands feel that you are pushing so you're pushing something and at the same time you're growing your head up and pressing the sit bones down and then gradually explore pushing your hands now a little bit in a diagonal so you should feel there's the gentle lengthening of the muscles of all the fibers and a gentle connection again hugging your belly a little bit close to the core and then we're going to do all of that until we're pushing all the way up so keep lengthening beautiful so here we're just keeping breathing nice and steady we're not doing anything in particular matching movement and breath we're just ensuring we are breathing and we are really trying to lengthen, lengthen all of these fibers. And then you can go again with your presses. Now from here, we're going to do something slower and coordinate with the breath. So take an inhale. And then as you exhale, same breath that we have done, long through the mouth. And as you exhale, push the hands forward, press through the feet. And at the same time, feel your baby hugging in or feel your abdominals gently lengthening. Grow the crown of your head up, press the sit bones into the ground. And then we go again in the diagonal. So take a wide breath into your ribcage. And then exhale, we're going to blow through the mouth. Press the hands gently in the diagonal, press through the feet and keep lengthening crown of head up, pressing sit bone into the ground. Release, take an inhale. And then this time press the sky away, press through your feet, long exhale through the mouth, keeping the neck nice and soft, lengthen, 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 and then release. Beautiful. And then we're going to do another round, but this time we're going to involve the pelvic floor. So same principle, take an inhale. Now, as you exhale, gently engage your pelvic floor, continue exhaling and then press the hands. Inhale, release pelvic floor. Inhale, widen into your ribs. And then we go again. Exhale, zip the pelvic floor. Start exhaling through the mouth and then push, 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 push. Grow the crown of your head. Press sit bones into the ground. Release. And then one last one. Inhale, widen the ribs. Exhale, engage the pelvic floor. And as you continue exhaling, nice and slow, press the ceiling as if you were pushing the ceiling away. And at the same time, your sit bones are pressing into the ground. And then you release. Beautiful. Take a little shake, making sure we're coming back to softness so that we're really not building tension in our body. We're not building tightness. We are really working on that elasticity of the fibers, of all of our body structures. And so for that, we want to make sure that when we tone, we also release. And that's really important. Wonderful. We're going to explore one last practice that is suitable postnatally and prenatally. So coming onto your knees and we're going to come to standing. So really important to transition in a really mindful way. So tucking the toes under, walk your hands towards your knees and then lifting both knees off the ground at the same time, moving your weight into your feet. Now imagine you're squeezing something between your legs so that you can gradually roll up keeping the pelvis nice and stable when you arrive up i know my head has disappeared but don't tuck the tailbone under we want to keep the pelvis nice and free stacking again your rib cage over your pelvis pelvis over the ankles now take a soften here i'm just going to adjust my screen ever so slightly wonderful and here what we're going to do is a little walk and then some circling standing up. So if you are pregnant and you have high blood pressure, we're gonna 
keep our hands, so folded forearms in front of us at shoulder height. If you don't have any blood pressure, we're going to take the arms overhead. Wonderful. Now from here, so I'm going to use the length of my mat. I'm going to take right foot forward. You can keep the knees a little bit soft. And then you're going to twist your body gently towards the right. So here we're trying to work with the fibers that, will, that work across the belly. So our oblique fibers, they're going to help to gently keep those fibers working. And if we are postnatal, really rebuild on that elasticity. And then you take the other step uh, forward. So left and you gently twist side to side. So step right, gently twist to the right. And then step left and twist to the left. Now, what's really important, going back to what I said at the beginning, we are not trying to twist as far as we can. We want to try that to keep this quite fluid, quite elastic. So think more that you are spiraling from your back heel to this elbow that's going to the front. Inhale, release, exhale, explore the twist to the other side. So side to side. If you're feeling it's a little bit much with your arms overhead, you can bring the arms to the front, to shoulder height. Wonderful, taking steps side to side. I'm working with the breath, exhaling nice and slow. And then inhale, release, and then to the other side. Beautiful. So this is one of these exercises that we not feel that much happening in your body, but this is really, really supportive. We're engaging the legs all the way to the upper fibers of our rib cage. Beautiful. Now from here, we're going to release into a lasso. So from here, take your feet hip width apart if you are pregnant. If you are postnatal, you can bring the legs together. You could even hug the, uh, a block between your legs. So otherwise pregnant feet hip width apart. And then again, you're gonna either hold your elbows or you could hold your wrist, arms overhead. And then from here, just start to roll the hips into circles. And once you've had that movement, start to roll the arms overhead in the opposite direction. Now, try not to overthink it. It might get a little bit confusing as you look at me. And so finding a sense that we are keeping, lengthening this chest bone away from the pubic bone. And at the same time, loosening and lengthening those fibers. So everything becoming really responsive, really elastic, beautiful. And in the moment, we're gonna to try to reverse the movement. And you might find there's always a side that's a little bit clunky. So you might start again with just circling the hips in the opposite direction. And of course, if you have any high blood pressure, you can just keep the arms low. Otherwise, we take the arms overhead and then we're going to circle the hips in the opposite direction. Keeping the feet nice and wide. And you don't have to go really fast, but really feeling this really involves all the structures of our back, of our front, of the legs. So beautiful softening and energizing practice. And really, really good for our core in a really uh, integrative way. And then releasing the arms and take a soften. Fantastic. Now from here, I'm gonna walk you one last practice where we can, uh, which is for the postnatal period, where we can really look to address and repair the diastasis. So I'm going to adjust my screen again. Fantastic. So let's roll down to the floor. Again, in a nice transition. So bring the hands to the ground and then knees together at the same time and coming to sit. And then from here, we're going to lie down on our back. So lying on the back and exercises lying on your back are the best way to exercise very early postnatally. And this is because it is much easier to hold ourselves nice and long in a really good posture 
because we don't have to hold ourselves up. The floor is doing that for us. But it's also a really good way because our stretch abdominals and our stretch pelvic floor don't have to hold the weight of your organs. So we're going to be able to feel much more engagement because they don't have to do anything else. These muscles don't have to do anything else but the exercises we are exploring. So it's a really good place to start. And of course, after that, we can build other things. So like all the exercises, of course, these are not the only thing, but this is a good starting point. So we're gonna slide and we're gonna transition onto the back of the body through the back side of the body. And this is really important if you have uh, diastasis or if you are in the first eight weeks of uh, postnatal period, because then we are not straining those muscles and structures until they are ready to carry that weight. So rolling to the side of the body, and then you're going to roll onto your back. Now, once you're onto your back, what we're going to do is extend one leg down. You're going to bring the other foot at the height of the knee. And then once you're there, bring the other leg bent, feet parallel, knees bent. So this is the good measurement for you to be in a neutral position for your pelvis. You should feel that you are onto the flat of the pelvis, so you are not squashing your lower back into the ground, and you should not be too arched. Okay, so try to find a neutral pelvis. If you need a blanket to make that more comfortable, please do that. And then we're going to make sure that the neck is nice and long. So the chin is ever so slightly towards the throat. And again, we have this long space between our pubic bone and our chest bone. So in this position, you could take your diaphragmatic breathing, just like we did at the beginning of this video. So you could do that in a lying down position. And so it might be easier now, you are postnatal, to feel this hugging in or slightly hollowing out of your belly as you exhale. Now, this exercise, we're gonna do one leg extended. Now I'm gonna extend one leg and I'm gonna flex the foot. So the leg is active, I'm gently engaging the leg and you're gonna take your arms behind the head interlocked with really wide elbows. So the chest is nice and open. And then the foot that is still pressing into the ground, the knee bent, you're gonna gently kiss the floor with your sole of the foot. Now, remember what I said, Everything we do is nice and soft, so we're not going to use all our might. And I know postnatally, we want to really work hard, but actually this might not play in our favor. So keep everything nice and gentle, maybe using 30% of what you can do. So this is how the exercise goes. As we inhale, we're going to breathe wide into our rib cage. Now take an exhale again, softly through a tiny gap in your mouth, nice and soft. And as you exhale, you're going to close the elbows around your head and you're going to push through the extended leg. And then if you can, keeping a little bit of pushing into that foot, into the ground. So it's a lot of things to think about, closing the elbows. And you might feel that it's engaging the ribcage to close as well. And then you're lengthening the leg away as if you were pushing something off your mat and then pressing that foot in. And then inhaling, you release everything. So we're gonna do another time. Inhale here, exhale, nice and slow exhale, close the elbows, press the foot away and press the foot into the ground. So you should feel a deep activation of these muscles round uh, the lower back, and then run especially into uh, the, the space between your hips, closing in towards the middle. Now we can take it here with a pelvic floor activation. So we're going to take an inhale, and then we're going to engage pelvic floor, then continue exhaling. And as you exhale, hugging those elbows together, so as if you were squeezing something between the elbows, and again, pressing that foot away. So again, nice and gentle. You don't want to create any pain or tension. And then inhale, release. Beautiful. You can take another fourth one. Inhale. Exhaling, pressing through the feet, closing the elbows. Nice, long exhale all the way to your exhale. Maybe feeling that ribcage closing. Those hip bones 
as if they were getting a little closer together and inhale release beautiful nice drag your foot and then you're going to take your feet a little wider apart and again soften so really important soften through the jaw soften through the eyes and soften through your hips beautiful and then you walk your feet back together and so you can try if you're still in the right position extending right leg now check that your left foot is at the height of the right knee and then we start again and you do the same thing on the other side so in the inhale right into your rib cage exhaling nice long exhale engaging pelvic floor and squeezing something between your elbows pressing the foot away and inhaling release and so you can do these exercises a couple of times uh, a few times a week so for all therapeutic exercises i would recommend that they work best when they are done often and little so little uh, maybe maybe 10 repetition and then you do that maybe three times a week that's the best way uh, to start really uh, rehabbing those uh, muscles and structures. So as I said, of course, there's a starting point. If you want more support, especially to start closing and repairing your body postnatally, I have a postnatal uh, recovery essentials uh, workshop recording, which you can uh, purchase on uh, unlimited time where we I walk you through many, many other practices that you can do to start to really rebuild the strength and responsiveness in your pelvic floor, in all of your abdominals, uh, rib cage mobility, all of that really plays a part in rehabbing diastasis. Or if you need more targeted support, uh, the best way is generally to have a one-to-one -one session, a little chat at least, so that we can see exactly where you at and how to progress things for you. But I hope this was helpful and let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions and then maybe I'll see you soon in class or back here online.